My name is Brittany Legenius, and I am a graduate student from the University of Massachusetts. Today I will be speaking to you about how climate change could awaken some naturalized sleeper species. Many species have established outside of their native range, and the majority of these species are not invasive. Managing all of these species would be impossible, and considering that many are benign, it would also be impractical. However, it is possible that climate change could enhance the success of some naturalized species. Therefore, it would be prudent for us to identify the sleeper species that will awaken under future climate change. So what are sleeper species? Sleeper species are a subset of the current pool of naturalized species. These species aren't currently acting invasive because they are limited by climate. However, climate change might make habitat more suitable for some species, which may allow these species to awaken and become invasive. As indicated by the figure on the right, if we were to plot the typical invasion trajectory for a non-native species, a sleeper species would be indicated by the red line. Initially, a sleeper species abundance is low, but under future climate change, its limitations are lifted, resulting in rapid growth of this species. Naturalized species that are limited by factors other than climate are indicated by the blue line. These species are anticipated to persist at low abundances under future warming scenarios. Since management costs also increase with increased abundance, identifying a sleeper species before they awaken or early in its invasion trajectory is a cost-effective management strategy. Some evidence for sleeper species has been documented across taxonomic groups. One case study of a sleeper species is the acorn barnacle. This species is native to the Southwest Pacific Ocean and was introduced to the UK coastline in 1943. As this figure illustrates, this species remained at very low densities until the late 1990s, but then rapidly expanded after a series of atypically warm summers and winters that spanned from 2001 to 2008. We believe the Northeastern United States is especially at risk to sleeper species for a couple of reasons. One, the Northeast is a hotspot for naturalized species. As shown in the figure on the left, there are over 1,000 naturalized species within the, within the Northeast. Two, many of the plants and animals introduced originate from warmer climates. One major obstacle for organisms living in the Northeast is the ability to cope with the characteristic harsh winters. However, this is expected to change in the future. If we compare the average minimum temperature in January currently, which is shown in the top right figure, with 2090 projections shown in the bottom right figure, we expect average minimum temperature in January to increase by several degrees in the future. So what can we do? The Bradley Lab proposes the following schematics to prioritize and manage sleeper species. In the simplest terms, we recommend identifying the pool of naturalized species in your study area, identifying the subset of naturalized species that are most likely to become invasive, and then from the subset, prioritizing for management the species with the highest potential for success. For the remainder of this presentation, I will walk you through a more detailed explanation of how to implement this process. For the first step, you will want to use your favorite database for identifying the pool of naturalized species in your study area. Several useful databases are shown here and include GRIS, the Global Register of Introduced and Invasive Species, GLONAF, the Global Naturalized Alien Flora, WORMS, the World Register of Marine Species, and the USDA Plants Database. After we obtain your list, of naturalized species, we will want to identify the subset that are sleepers, or the non-native species that will awaken under climate change. Therefore, we recommend using climate matching to identify the subset of naturalized species where the climate of the native range matches the invaded range under future climate change. Now that we have potential sleeper species, we will want to perform a trait-based risk assessment that identifies traits typical of invaders, such as high fecundity or fast growth rates. Lastly, we also recommend conducting an impact assessment, such as the Environmental Impact Classification of Alien Taxa, or ICAT. This type of, in of impact assessment allows us to rank each species according to the severity 
and mechanisms of impact documented by the scientific literature. Taken all together, sleepers that exhibit potential invasiveness based on the trait-based and or impacts assessment are a high priority for management. We can prioritize this list further by considering factors that will impact the likelihood of eradication. Surveys of high priority species in their introduced range will allow us to determine if conditions are conducive to eradication. If conditions are favorable, for example, if the population is small, the value of the natural resource area is high, and or the treatment efficacy is high, then these species would be the most likely candidates for successful management under this approach. If you would like more information on sleeper species and other management challenges, please check out our RISC website. Thanks.